Welcome back. I'd like to thank again the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. It is still Wednesday, January the 16th. Uh, my guest in this segment is Bo Filter, and we're going to be talking about the recent referendum on proportional representation, but from a slightly different perspective. So, Well, what I think we, uh, we should talk about that is there's a couple really big problems, and one of them is that's been plaguing voting since these new electronic machines have come over come on board is that there's no verification trail. So we didn't have that with the referendum and we're so gonna, we need to talk about that a bit. Uh, the other thing is uh, all the associated tabulation companies uh, history of vote, uh, of vote rigging, it warrants a discussion and an investigation. So I want to spend a little time talking about what's been going on uh, with the, with, with voting the in vote general. rigging in general since okay. the beginning of the of these big expensive uh, machine machines and these secret um, companies that run them. Um, so you had mentioned earlier today about the uh, 2005 proportional representation when uh, we actually uh, actually won it by 57 to 43 percent. Yes, we actually won. Uh, no, I don't know. We actually won. Well, they, people voted for sorry, proportional yeah. representation yeah. in 2005, 57% to 43%, but they told us that 57% lost, and we said, okay. Well, it wasn't enough. We're yeah. so nice. It's, We're so it's nice. not enough. Well, yeah. And then uh, there was another one in 2009, which PR lost. Well, this one, if you take the difference between the two, and it's, the numbers are kind of flipped uh, backwards on 2018. What would cause that kind of discrepancy is something we have to really ask. Is it something, did the voters really change their mind? Um, or is there, did they really say, well, I don't want to do this anymore? Was there scare tactics, something totally different? As oh, I understand it, they were running, it was running basically neck to neck according to the polls. And then all of a sudden there's this huge discrepancy at the end. Yeah, and so the final vote was about 61% to 38%. So. Right, and so that's a, wow. from the 2005, that's a huge flip, you know. Of, yep. It could be as high as a million people in that. Uh, so we need to look, really look at the history. So I, I brought a few notes about the history of uh, how this works, and I thought we should tie it together what's actually happened here with the referendum. So, uh, before the vote, uh, Elections BC partnered, that's their term, with Dominion Voting Canada, okay? I'm going to call that DVC. Now, in 2002, uh, DVC was founded. Now, it is the, that's the company from which the vote counting machines that were used in the proportional that's representation right. A referendum that came from Dominion Voting Canada. They tabulated the vote, yes. Okay. And it's a private equity firm with secret finances, so it's not uh, open to the public to look at what they're doing and why they're doing it and how uh, their internal politics work or who, if they have any favoritism, anything like that is not. Oh, uh, so it's not a corporation where the books are more open? No, there's nothing open about it. Okay. So now, if we jump from 2002 up to 2010, because I'm just taking a few big piece chunks here that are important. Uh, DVC, Dominion Voting Canada, uh, buys Premier Election Solutions Incorporated. Now, its predecessor name in 2007 was Diebold Incorporated. And uh, Diebold's a, a large voting machine manufacturer uh, who was hoping at the time to unload a falling stock price, and a collapsed reputation. Yeah, there were a lot of questions asked about Diebold back at that time. So Dominion Voting Canada bought the bought Diebold, basically. They, okay. they, they in effect, bought Diebold. Okay. Now, Diebold, at the time, was up to its neck in vote rigging charges. Um, and that, that had happened since the 2000 presidential election. In fact, in 2003, uh, the Diebold CEO, um, Walden O'Dell, uh, committed himself to delivering Ohio's votes to George W. Bush in 2004. 
And, uh, and he did actually do that. His machine company was in <laughs> Ohio, and they used it to put Bush in the presidency. Or not. I mean, we, we cannot yeah, say these not. things with a 100% certainty. Well, that's right. There was so crazy. much corruption going on. Okay. Well, anyway, by 2006, then, Diebold was under formal investigation by the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, in addition, a security fraud class action lawsuit charged Diebold with not only fraud, but insider trading, stock price manipulation, and concealing voting machine flaws. So, and in addition to that, uh, two researchers, one named uh, Bob uh, Fitarikas and Harvey Wasserman, uh, they were able to link Diebold uh, executives uh, to CIA coups in third world countries. Okay. Okay, so just a second. So this is Diebold, and Diebold was purchased by Dominion Voting Canada, which is the company that was partnered with by Elections BC to count the PR votes. To count our votes for us. Okay. okay. So now we have to understand that election meddling is a standard mechanism of, of CIA operations globally. And we're not saying that there's anything wrong with the vote count. Not necessarily. But we're, it's but we're, interesting, it's, it's, the it's, links. It's suspicious, and we need to be looking into it. And uh, anyway, these CIA operations globally, globally, they call these soft coups. A soft coup is when you don't kill Too many thousands of people. Yeah. You, you rig an election instead. Nobody gets hurt except your country is not going to go in the direction the people want it to go. So that's a soft coup. It's going to go in the direction they want, but no one supposedly gets hurt, so to speak. Okay, now we jump up here to 2018. Uh, July 16th, a DVC, that's Dominion Voting Canada, is purchased by a New York company called Staple Street Capital. And that, so that what that does is that automatically involves them as se uh, senior decision makers in BC's PR referendum. Okay, they get so to be talking about all the private stuff that goes on. Okay, so July 16th of 2018, Dominion Voting Canada, which is the company from which our, that counted the votes in our referendum, and I guess counts other things across Canada as well, is purchased by, I read it was purchased by its management, and the funding came through Staple Street Capital. Well, it was um, coupled by both of them. Okay. And uh, so... Um, so Staple Street Capital now becomes a part of... That's right. It, and so they, they've got a big say in this. Now, okay. two of the co-founders of Staple Street and one of the uh, current executives have at one time or another been involved with the Carlyle Group. And the Carlyle Group, you know, you talk about CIA, etc. Uh, Carlyle is considered an extension of the NSA, National Security, Security Agency in the U.S., the CIA and the Pentagon. Okay. So the company that financed the purchase of Dominion Voting Canada, the people involved with that, that it's called Staple Street Capital. It's a, it's a private equity firm. That's right. And it's linked into the Carlyle Group. And the Carlyle Group became famous around the time of 9-11 because the Carlyle Group was the organization that both the Bush family and the Bin Laden family were members of That's in right. the Carlyle Group. So this is, I mean, you know, you're reaching into the stratosphere of... Well, I'll talk about that in a second, but it's, it's, it's among the largest armament companies in the world. Largest and arms, armament arms, company, okay. And it's deeply involved with the mili U.S. military industrial complex and all their war crimes around the world. So, for instance, one of the crimes is that they helped destroy Iraq in 2003 on, on the tr trumped-up charges of WMDs, weapons of mass destruction. The Carlisle It all came group. out. Car yeah, Carlisle was a part of that. And then after the war, uh, they get paid by taxpayers to destroy uh, Iraq, and then they get a billion-dollar contract with the U.S. government to rebuild contract. You know, that's called war booty, you know. Uh, it's a you know, what else can you call it? So, an, so another example of Carlyle then is what you just mentioned about the meeting with the uh, Osama bin Laden family and the Bush family on the day before 9-11 and on the day of 9-11. Uh, Bush Sr., that's H.W. Bush, was uh, having breakfast 
with Osama bin Laden's brother, I think his name is uh, Shafiq, uh, who's a fellow investor in the Carlisle Group. Okay? So the strings are already going from our election all the way to the, to the Carlisle Group and 9-11. And, and, and they're meeting and having breakfast at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in New York while 9-11 is taking place. Okay? Now you would, th you'd think that in a healthy country, um, uh, both families would have been arrested and put through a vigorous investigation. But instead, what happened was the White House arranged for the Bin Laden family, which at that time consisted of 13 members, in the uh, to fly States. out of the United States in a chartered flight that was arranged and set up by the White House, okay? Uh, and of course, this is happening when everybody was, uh, all Americans were grounded because they didn't want any of the terrorists to escape. And yet the White House lets the Bin Laden family completely go. So okay, and so that, this is the just, Carlisle just Group, wild. and the Carlisle Group is the people who purchased, the, the company that purchased Dominion Voting Canada, which is the company that counts the votes in a lot of elections right across Canada. Mm -hmm. They're very prominent in Ontario. <clears throat> and they also counted the votes in our proportional representation uh, referendum, is linked, we can say, to the Carlisle Group. That's right. Yeah. Which is, just seems like a strange link. You know, our voting machine company is linked into these very strange... Well, birds of a feather flock together, yeah, yeah. and all these people that are involved in, uh, in uh, you know, working around the world to overthrow elections around the world, etc. They, they work together. So, uh, so this kind of brings us then around to something else, that uh, w what we need to do then is to have a public count of our oh, there's only two minutes left. We, of our vote. This is important stuff. So yeah. the first thing well, is hand counting is the gold standard. Right. And there was a machine made, uh, only one machine out of all of them. All of them have been secret, privately owned. One man was so disturbed by the 2000 election that he made a machine that everyone can trace. You can trace it right to the tabulation. You get a receipt out of the machine. And he was on his way to the uh, Congress and uh, to, to speak about it, and he was killed and it, mysteriously. And these mysterious, uh, well, it was considered a, uh, an accidental death. But we know that a lot of these accidental deaths are, um, uh, are not so accidental because we, we know back when the John F. Kennedy assassination happened, uh, Jim Mars, a book who wrote, uh, wrote a book, uh, Crossfire, uh, he said that there were dozens of people who accidentally died that were live witnesses to, to the death of JFK. And the chances of it, a statistician did the statistics on it and said, well, by chance that would only happen in one in 13 trillion. So a lot of people get accidentally killed when they have something really good going on. The uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Council of Mayors supported uh, this guy named uh, Ethan, Athen, G Ethan Gibbs for mating, making that machine. It was put in a bill to go before Congress, and over half of the Congress people supported it, co-sponsored the bill to go to a vote. But two Republican hegemons, representatives for the Republican Party, one, uh, blocked it. Tom DeLay was one of them blocked it from even going to a vote. So that was the end of it. So we need to get the vote back. Sorry, we don't have a machine that's going to work for us today. Let's go back to the hand count and let's have, I'd like everybody to go. And we're not saying, to their MRI, we're not saying that the count, but it's just an interesting situation. Right. Thank you very much safely. for watching this segment of Citizens Voting.